Hello and welcome back to the Wasteland everybody. Today we're going to be doing another Fallout New Vegas tier list. This time we're going to be taking a look at all of the energy weapon rifles. Last time we looked at pistols, now it's time to take a look at the rifles. So let's hop right into this list. Our very first rifle is the Humble Laser Rifle. The laser rifle is probably one of the first full-sized laser weapons that you can get access to. Maybe you'll find a recharger rifle before this, maybe you'll find a plasma rifle before this, but the laser rifles are fairly common. This requires only 25 energy weapons and 3 strengths, so most builds are going to be able to use this very early on. It has good damage, good damage per second, okay crit damage, uh, 1.5 times crit modifiers. It is good on action point cost, and it is very, very accurate. The laser weapons, especially the laser rifles, are extremely accurate. It also holds a lot of rounds, holding 24 rounds, weighs 8, so it is a little bit hefty, but not too bad. Health is kind of low, but that's a general concern for energy weapons. Not a huge deal because laser rifles aren't super difficult to find. And if you take jury rigging, you can basically fix all of the two-handed laser and plasma weapons with one another. This one can have three modifications that you can add to it. You can get a focus optic, which gives it three more base damage. That's really nice. A scope, which gives it a scope. That's pretty nice. I usually don't use the scope on the laser rifle, but if you like it, that's cool too. And then the third option is the beam splitter. This one gets you a second beam that's basically right on top of the other beam and gets you more damage per shot. I think it's 30% more damage or the second laser does 30% of the damage. Either way, you get a damage buff from this. If you stack all this on top of one another, it makes the laser rifle pretty strong as an early game weapon and even into the mid and late game, it's pretty good. Especially if you want to take something like Laser Commander, which is a fantastic perk for <laughs> laser weapons. The regular old laser rifle I think is actually pretty solid. I'm going to put it on the low end of A tier. I think it can carry you all the way through the game if you wanted to just use a regular laser rifle and then it's pretty good. We technically do have another version of the laser rifle on here that's sort of different with the Van Graff's laser rifle. There's also a Van Graff's plasma rifle but I didn't include them on this list. I didn't really see a point in it. They're basically the same as the base weapon and you only get it for one mission if you're going to do that. Up next we have the AER-14 prototype. This one is the unique laser rifle. This one you can find in Vault 22 I believe. You have to go all the way to the bottom of Vault 22 in level 5 and then take the stairs back up. There's going to be I think two or three mantises that are guarding this on a skeleton and then you can just pick it up off the floor. This one also requires 25 energy weapons and 3 strength. This one also shoots green lasers rather than the red lasers of the regular laser rifle. And this one, even though it holds 24 rounds, this does consume 2 ammo every time that you fire it. But this one does have much higher damage than the regular laser rifle. It has higher DPS because of that. It's got good crit damage. It's got a 2 times crit modifier. It has fairly low action point cost. Not quite as low as the regular laser rifle, but very low. It's actually really good for a VATS build. Extremely low spread. Weighs slightly more than a regular laser rifle and doesn't have as much HP, although it does go through HP a bit slower than the regular laser rifle, so at least in terms of ammo. So I guess you technically have more, if depending on how you want to count it. This one is quite solid too for an energy weapon. I think it's a really solid weapon overall. I think it is better than the regular laser rifle, although I think I do technically use the laser rifle more often than this. I'm going to put this one high up into A tier. I think it's a solid all-around weapon. Really good for a VATS build, really good for a laser build. May, I could see people arguing this for S tier though too if you have like laser commander because that's really good or if you're building this all for a VATS build similar to how you use all American for that. It, it is really good. It, it's a really good weapon. And then we have our last version of the laser rifle. This is the tri-beam laser rifle. This is basically a laser shotgun. This fires out three rounds every time that you fire it. They are very close together not like how it was in Fallout 3 where the lasers can sometimes be really close together and sometimes just go in a very wide shotgun spread and not hit anything. This one is a lot more consistent in New Vegas. This requires 75 energy weapons and 4 strength to wield, so not too much strength but a decent amount of energy weapons. Does really high damage per shot, really high damage per second. Uh, it does have an above average crit modifier, although it has low crit damage because the crit is the same as the regular laser rifle but I think that counts for each beam. I could be wrong. The spread is quite a bit more than the other laser rifles, but it's actually not that bad. Um, this is still very good at close to medium range, and it does have very low health, although again, you are going to be using up less ammo statistically for it. Basically, it's one-third the health of the regular laser rifle, but it's firing out three shots, so you get the same... I guess longevity out of it as you will a regular laser rifle. This can also chew through ammo really really fast and it does weigh more than the laser rifle at 9 which is a little bit hefty. It'd be nice if it weighed 10 because then you could take heavy weight and cut the weight in half. You can get three modifications for this assuming you get the Gunrunner's Arsenal version. You can get the Tribeam Focus Laser which gives you three more damage per projectile. That's pretty nice. 
You can get the heavy duty capacitors, which increases the weapon's condition by 200%, so it doesn't break as quick. That's really good for this one. And you can also get the high capacity terminal, which uh, doubles its overall capacity from 24 rounds, which gets you eight shots. And then it doubles that to 48 rounds, so you get 16 shots in total with this. That's actually really strong, and if you have this thing completely decked out and you're okay with it breaking quick and you have a lot of microfusion cells, the Tribeam Laser is really, really strong. It can clear up basically anything in the game. It's just it is very, very ammo hungry. So I'm going to assume that you have a ton of bullets with this one and you are willing to use things like jury rigging or weapon repair kits to get this. And I'm going to say that the Tribeam Laser is S tier. It's actually a very consistent shotgun. Next, we have the Plasma Rifle. This might be the other early game uh, full-size rifle that you find for energy weapons. This one requires 25 energy weapons and 3 strength to wield effectively, so not too much. Does good damage per shot, decent damage per second, uh, has a 2 times crit modifier, does good crit damage, action point costs are okay, it does have more spread than the laser rifles, but it's still fairly accurate. This does consume 2 ammo every time that you fire it, so even though it holds 24 rounds, you only get 12 shots out of it. And the other thing you gotta keep in mind with the plasma weapons is that they do have a travel time. So you do have to lead your shot a little bit once you get out to longer ranges. You usually don't at close to medium range. You can just fire directly at something and most of the time you'll hit it. You can also get one modification for the regular plasma rifle, which is the plasma mag accelerator. That just doubles the speed of your shots makes it a lot more consistent at medium and longer ranges. That's pretty nice. I usually don't use the plasma rifle as much as I use the laser rifle. It's still pretty solid though. I'm going to put this up into high B tier. Um, not my go-to over a laser rifle, but not a bad option either. And if you want more damage per shot, or I guess more damage per cell, then you could go with the plasma rifle over the laser rifle. You could always take both of them too if you want. Use the plasma rifle for close and medium range, use the laser rifle for long range. Then we have the unique plasma rifle, which I think is quite a bit better than the regular plasma rifle. This is the Q35 Matter Modulator. This one you find at the Repcon headquarters. You can get this a couple different ways. You can go on the tour and get it for free if you just follow the robot around. Um, if you have high lock picking slash high science, then you can just go around through the building. You could also pass some speech checks. I think there's a lock check mixed in with there too. And you can just get this at the end of the building. So the Q35 requires 25 energy weapons, and only two strength, less than the regular plasma rifle, as well as it consumes less ammo than the regular plasma rifle, only consuming one ammo per shot. Uh, although this does have half the magazine size, so you're still getting 12 shots either way, but you're using up less ammo with this one. You also get slightly less damage with this, but that doesn't matter because it's very slight. It still has really good damage per second. It still has a 2 times crit modifier, which is really great. And importantly, it has above average crit damage at 62 damage per shot. It also has fairly low action point cost, making it great for a VATS build. Still fairly accurate. Uh, has a lot of health for a energy weapon. It's not so much compared to maybe the ballistic weapons, but... Still a lot of uh, health overall. Only weighs 7, so not as much as the regular plasma rifle. This one's just all around really good. I like this one a lot. It's really easy to get early on, and it can carry you through the entire game. I'm going to put this one up into low S tier. Uh, I, I think it's really, really good and really ammo efficient. Then we've got the last plasma rifle, which is the multi plas rifle. This one requires 50 energy weapons and 4 strength. This one can be a bit rare to find, but you can buy it from like the Van Graffs. Um, I think there's a couple other places you can usually buy it from the Brotherhood as well. This one does high damage, high damage per second. This consumes 3 ammo and fires out 3 shots per shot, similar to the Tribeam Laser, except for this is with Plasma. It has an average crit chance and fairly low crit damage compared to that, which is a little bit of a bummer. It has more spread than something like the Tribeam Laser, uh, and this one can't have any modifications on it. This one is a little bit inconsistent once you get to longer ranges. The speed plus the spread makes it so sometimes you're only hitting with one shot at longer range enemies. Medium range, it's alright. Now, close range is actually really good. If you want to take this indoors, it's it's actually pretty solid. So, for that, I'm going to put it in low A tier, but um, yeah, I don't think it's as good as the Tribeam Laser. You also can't modify it like you can with the Tribeam. Up next, we've got the Hollow Rifle. The Hollow Rifle is a unique weapon that you find, well, you're just given it at the start of Dead Money. Elijah gives this to you. This requires 50 energy weapons and 4 strength. This does high damage, pretty high damage per second, really high crit damage as well, um, which is nice, although it does just have a regular crit modifier. It has good action point cost for how much damage it does, though. It has about the same spread as the Plasma Rifle, a little bit better than it. This is a modified grenade launcher, if you couldn't tell, so it's a pump action. You do have to load this one cell at a time. It holds four rounds in it. 
It does weigh a decent amount, it doesn't have a ton of health, just like a lot of the energy weapons, but you can find three upgrades for it in dead money. You do have to get them while you're in dead money though, and these mods are a focus optic to get it 25 more damage, that's really good, and advanced calibration to reduce its spread even further so it's actually really accurate, and then reinforced components to increase its condition. Although this one is bugged for some reason and I don't think it works exactly the way that it says. So at least you can get the other two more damage and more accuracy, that's really good. If you want an energy weapon sniper rifle that's fairly quick on follow-up shots, this one is really good for that. It's better than something like the Gauss rifle for uh, multiple targets, uh, assuming you're not fighting them at very long range. Oh, and there is one downside to the hollow rifle too, is that you can't use jury rigging to fix it. You will need uh, weapon repair kits or somebody to repair it, or I think Eddie can repair it too. I'm going to put this one high up into A tier. I think it's, again, really good but it does have some weird quirks that go along with it, so I'm not gonna put it up into S tier, although I could see people arguing it for S tier, because I know it's a lot of people's favorite weapon, and it does definitely look very, very unique. I like that it's all just put together from Elijah's random stuff that he found around the, uh, the casino. All right, our next weapon is the Laser RCW. This one is the Laser Tommy Gun. This one doesn't take microfusion cells. It's the only rifle that doesn't. This one takes the electron charge pack, similar to the Gatling laser. The RCW requires 50 energy weapons and four strength. This does fairly low damage per shot, but pretty good damage per second. It has a very low crit modifier because it is like a Tommy Gun and low crit damage because of that. Actually pretty good action point cost if you want to use this in a VATS build, and it's very accurate for a submachine gun. I think it's actually the most accurate submachine gun in the game, at least if you want to call this a submachine gun. This one only weighs four. Interestingly enough, it's actually very lightweight and it actually has a lot of health, although it does go through ammo quickly, so its health does uh, degrade pretty fast. There is only one modification for this and that is the recycler, which makes it so every fourth shot or every one in four shots, you will be refunded one of those ammo back. That can be pretty useful. Uh, electronic charge packs aren't super difficult to find, and usually you get a lot of them. I, uh, Although I haven't done a Tommy Gun only playthrough with like the Laser RCW, so maybe that is an issue. It probably would be throughout the mid-game when you're probably getting this weapon, but uh, nice quality of life uh, overclock for it. This one's super fun, although I don't think that it's super strong. It is probably one of my favorite weapons in New Vegas, though, overall. It just looks really cool and it functions really well, but I don't think I can give it any higher of a spot than, like, B tier, because against big enemies, it doesn't kill them super fast, and against armored enemies, it doesn't kill them super quick. But against small and medium enemies, it can shred through them pretty fast, so that's pretty cool. And then we've got our Recharger Rifle. The Recharger Rifle, you can find very early on because you can just find it on Blight members. Sometimes you can find it in just random caves in bags. I think some of the early traders can also have laser rifles or Recharger Rifles. And this one is... Uh... I, I want to like it, but it's honestly not that great of a weapon. This one has a requirement of 5 strength, 0 energy weapons. It does low damage per shot, fairly low damage per second, pretty actually very low practical damage per second. Has an above average crit modifier, although very low crit damage, so that doesn't really matter. Action point cost is low, so you can spam this in the vats. It is very accurate, and this does technically have infinite ammo. You just have to wait for it to recharge up and it can hold 7 rounds and then you can fire this. This also weighs 15, which is quite heavy. It does have high health for an energy weapon though, so it does actually take uh, quite a while for this one to break down. It's both one of my most favorite energy weapons in terms of function and feel, similar to the Recharger Pistol. It's, it's not as good as the Recharger Pistol, nor is it as good, it's nowhere near as good as the Unique Recharger Pistol. But like in terms of function, the Recharger Rifle is probably one of the weakest weapons in the entire game. It's just yeah, very mad. It also isn't affected by the Laser Commander perk for whatever reason. Same goes with the Laser or the Recharger Pistol. They, even though they shoot out lasers, they don't count as laser weapons. I'm not sure if that is tied to ammunition type or what. But yeah, the Recharger Rifle we're going to have to put into D tier. I just don't think it's super strong. It's more for like a challenge run than anything. Anyway, moving on to the LAER. This one you can find in Old World Blues, you can actually find a couple of these. I think you can buy an infinite amount of them from the sink itself, because I think it always restocks these. This one requires 45 energy weapons and 4 strength. This does high damage, really high damage per second, because it does shoot pretty fast. Has an above average crit modifier, although its crit damage sucks, so crits rarely matter with this thing. I guess it's a little bit more damage, which is nice. Action point cost is pretty good, spread is very low. Holds 20 rounds in it and just consumes one shot at a time, which is really good. It doesn't weigh very much, although it does have low health too, so it can break pretty fast. This one can have two mods on it. You can get the recharger clip, which makes it so it recycles uh, one round every four shots. 
very useful. And you can also get the Prismatic Lens, which splits the beam into three beams, increasing its damage by 30%. Pretty much the same as the Laser Rifle's Beam Splitter. This one's actually really good. Uh, if it had higher health, it would be amazing. It, it already is pretty amazing as it is. Uh, just the regular LAER, especially with mods on it, is... Uh, I'm, I'm gonna say it's either high A tier or low S tier. Then we have the unique version, which is Elijah's Advanced LAER. You can find two of these throughout Old World Blues. You can find one at the Little Yangtze camp, and then the other one you can find at the Signal Hills transmitter. For some reason, I was thinking it was at his Overlook, but no, that's the Tesla cannon. So this one has even higher damage per shot, even higher damage per second, actually having an amazing amount of damage per second. Uh, again, above average crit chance, although bad crits, good action point cost, low spread. This one only holds 15 rounds. It still only consumes one shot per uh, round. So 15 rounds in a semi-automatic weapon is still more than enough. Still has low health, actually even lower health than the regular LAER, so it breaks really quick. Uh, it doesn't weigh very much though, which is nice. If you're willing to use either uh, weapon repair kits or jury rigging, then this one can be really, really strong. And I'm going to put this one up into S tier because this one is really good. You could even argue this one in S tier too because it's arguably just about as good as this. And then we've got our final two rifles, which are the Gauss rifles. First up, we have the regular Gauss rifle. These can actually be pretty rare to find. You can buy them from the Silver Rush or from the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood carries them, so you could kill the Brotherhood to get them. Um, other than that, there's like a few other spawn locations, but they are fairly rare. This requires 75 energy weapons and 5 strength. This does really high damage per shot. Not really the highest damage per second, although it's damage per second isn't that bad because you can reload it fairly fast, so that's good. It does have a 2 times crit modifier. It does do less crit damage than what you would kind of expect, although it's still pretty decent crit damage. It does consume a decent amount of action points, so this one's kind of just okay for an action point build. Very low spread. Uh, and this holds five shots in it, but it consumes all five shots, so it's a single shot weapon. Uh, it also always has the scope on it, which is kind of nice. This one does have low health, but you're probably not going to be using the Gauss Rifle a whole lot. This is similar to like the energy weapon, but this is basically the energy weapons version of the 50 cal, which the 50 cal is pretty good. Uh, this one can also be really good, especially if you want to throw like max cells in it just to hit something really hard, especially if you like sneaking around and doing that. Uh, yeah, the Gauss Rifle is fantastic. It's it's a really good sniper rifle. I think I'm going to put the regular Gauss Rifle up into A tier. Um, still very good, but you could argue something like the Hollow Rifle might beat it out in terms of uh, damage per second. It probably would against multiple targets, but the Gauss Rifle will shot for shot. So both are good, but I think I'm going to put that one there. The unique version, the YCS-186, I'm going to put up into S tier. It's a little bit better than the Gauss Rifle. You can't take the Wild Wasteland perk if you want to be using this one, though. This one requires 75 uh, energy weapons and 5 strength as well, so it doesn't require that much investment. Does really high damage, pretty high damage per second, similar to the regular Gauss Rifle. This one also has a 2 times crit modifier. It does a little bit less damage than you would think with crit damage. Doing 70 crit damage, which is still quite high. I think that's the same as, like, the brush gun. So it's still really good. Has even less spread than the regular Gauss Rifle, but you probably won't even notice that. They're both very accurate. This one does only hold four rounds in it though, and it consumes all four rounds. So it is more ammo efficient than the regular Gauss Rifle too. That's really nice. And it has more health than the regular Gauss Rifle. There is no modifiers for the Gauss Rifles at all, but honestly, I don't think they really need them. They're very solid and that will do it for all of our energy rifles. Uh, as you can see, there is actually a lot of really good energy rifles. I didn't even put any into the C tier. Most of them, honestly, are quite strong throughout the entirety of the game. Tell me down in the comments below which is your favorite energy rifle. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones to pick. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye!